Welcome back. It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. In what is likely to be considered as a thought force at Benue State, the Social Democratic Party, SDP has entered into an alliance with the Labour Party, LP, in Benue State with an intent to support the later in the coming general elections. The state chairman of the SDP, Engineer John Enemari, announced at a press conference that his entire executive a strong dear weights behind the Labour Party in Benue State ahead of uh, the 2023 general elections. Meanwhile, the chairman of this party, including executive, are the 276 electoral wards of the 23 local government areas, have been directed to support the Labour Party for good governance in order to revamp the socio-economic fortunes of the citizenry. According to the chairman, and I quote, I consulted with all other parties, the APC, the PDP, but did not work as one was uh, trailed with legal issues, uh, others with integrity issues. Since we did not have a governorship candidate, we have decided to give our full support and ensure the Labour Party uh, wins in Benue State and salvage the state from infrastructural deficit and field promises. We have Nika Goulet joining the conversation. It's a good thing that he's a son of the soil, but he joins us this morning uh, from the United Kingdom. Thank you so much, Nika Goulet. Uh, unfortunately, one it been, uh, we're not being able to connect with you. Can you please unmute your <coughs> device? Right. Yes, uh, so, sorry, yeah. Uh, good morning, Mercy. All right. And good morning to our viewers. Happy to be here. Well, uh, thank you for joining us. Let's get straight to the conversation now. What, what do you make of this alliance now, the, this force that's happening? Uh, one would think that this is actually more like considered as a thought force, maybe in Benue State, because it's at the state level. But what do you make of this? Uh, if I read the statement issued by the, purportedly issued by the chairman of the Labour Party in Benue State, it sounds pretty much to me like a protest. You know, he is having grievances with the national office of the party, and he is basically issuing a protest and probably a threat to say that if you guys don't support us at the national level or from the national office, we are going to turn our support and our voters to a rival candidate on the Labour Party platform. Uh, what I don't know is the reaction of the national office to this development in Benue State, but I expect that there will be some sort of reaction from the national office. Uh, the Labour Party is lucky to have a candidate in the person of Mr. Peter Obi, who is a serious-minded person. So even if the national office does not respond, I expect Mr. Peter Obi to wade into this controversy and resolve it. So what you're saying that uh, the SDP... Uh, you know, SDP in Benway State, it's not like they really mean it because in their statement as well, I mean, the statement from the chairman has talked about the fact that he's consulted uh, the APC, the PDP, but, you know, it feels like there are some kind of issues. And at the end of the day, the Labour Party is what this resorted to. Boy, if you, you might just, just be a way to get the attention of the national because we know the crisis that's going on. Uh, with the SDP, and so there are a lot of factions. So you're saying that this is not what we think it is, like a thought force? No, I, I don't think um, uh, it's a thought force. I believe, uh, like, like you have rightly said, this is a cry out by the state chairman of the SDP to get attention. And and I'm not surprised because, like you have rightly said, the SDP is emerged in all sorts of controversies. I think even in their governorship uh, primaries in Benue, 
there are legal tussles that are going on and all of that. And for me, it is very sad. It's very sad because what we expect are parties like the SDP to start building internal democracy, start getting assembly seats, House of Rep seats, getting senatorial seats, even governorship seats, so that they can become a party to be reckoned with. But you know, parties like the SDP allow themselves to suffer the same malaise that the major parties are suffering. And then you ask yourself the question, if you, as a minority party, wants to come into the fray, shouldn't you be doing something different from the major parties? Because it is in showing that you are different that you'll be able to win the voters onto your side. But you cannot come onto the stage and be doing the same thing that the PDP and the APC are doing as a party and expect the people to take you serious. So I think uh, the SDP as a party needs to reorganize themselves. Uh, they also have to watch out because, you know, these major parties, when they see that a third force is trying to form, they actually sent in fifth columnists into those uh, movements and disrupt them. And I mean, it is one of the things that the Labour Party itself has to watch out for. There could be people who are taking very central roles in the Labour Party today, but whose objective is simply to disrupt that movement and knock off oxygen from, from, uh, from their system so that it, it doesn't work out. It's a, it's a known strategy by the major parties to cause insurrection in parties that they believe are going to uh, make some, some inroads into the elections, especially as we are heading into 2023. I mean, so don't you think that this is coming from a need to have a change at the end of the day? Unfortunately, there might just be a lot that's going on with the SD SDP, you know, at the national level. Uh, the chairman has mentioned the fact that, you know, infrastructural deficit and the fact that, you know, the people of Benway State have really nothing to show for after all of the promises that's been made. So it's important that you have, um, uh, you know, another force or party or someone come up to salvage the situation. Uh, don't you think that this is burning, uh, is coming from a desire for change? I mean, people are tired. It's not just what you think. And that's why they're saying, hey, uh, we want to throw our support because we don't have a candidate. Don't you think that that's the current reality of, of Benway State and there's a need for change? Um, absolutely, there is need for change. But the worry here is that a party like the SDP, which should be bringing that change, is towing the same path that these major parties that they are hoping to change what they are doing are, 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 is happening. The fact that the Labour Party does not have a candidate, if the chairman says the Labour Party does, sorry, the, the, if the chairman says that the SDP does not have a candidate, a gubernatorial candidate in Benue, that alone is a tete sign of insurrection within that party. What has made them not to have a gubernatorial candidate? Because if the, the SDP ordinarily should be a strong minority party. So why would they not have a gubernatorial candidate in a state like Benue? A state that is, is suffering a lot of misrule and misgovernance, and uh, the, the electorate are there for the taking. So this is the whole point that, yes, there is need for change, but unfortunately these parties that are coming up, that should be the agent of change, are actually doing the same thing, repeating the same thing, going by the same road that the parties they want to sweep out of are going. And it becomes difficult to see where that change is going to come from. Mm, but, but they are throwing their support to the uh, Labour Party in the state. It, it brings me now to the question of, do you think that the, uh, the Labour Party in Benway State has this threat or the structure, as we constantly put it, uh, you know, to win an election, especially in that state where you have uh, the presence. Uh, so um, the Labour Party, not only in Benue State, 
but nationally does not have a structure. And when we mean structure, we mean there has to be strong Labour Party movement at the national, at the regional, at the state, 36 states, at the 774 local governments, at the 8,800 plus wards, and the 120,000 or more polling units in Nigeria. You must have representation at all those levels. That is what structure means. You must have people doing the legwork. You must have people knocking on doors, meeting people in the market squares, meeting people at their places of work, getting Labour Party to be known and Labour Party candidates to be known at all those levels that I have described. That is what structure is. And the Labour Party today, as we know it, does not have those structures. As we can see in the recent uh, AKT gubernatorial election, they didn't make an impact. But the advantage that the Labour Party has is, number one, INEC, in their wisdom, have decided to give about six to seven months between the emergence of candidates and the proper elections. This is something that has not happened in Nigeria, and INEC has, needs to be commended for that. So the Labour Party has today, being July, all the way to February next year, to build those structures. You need to be very strategic and tactical about it. You see, because, you know, the Labour Party can easily win in Nigeria's election, but they have to carry on in a very strategic way. I mean, what I can advise them to do is, they need to follow the same strategy that those who got Donald Trump out of office followed. You see, those who got Donald Trump out of office, they didn't bother with Donald Trump supporters because they knew that even if they said Donald Trump has committed murder, they will still follow Donald Trump. So they instead went and got people who didn't want Donald Trump in office. They got them together in a movement and they voted Donald Trump out. So you will notice that Donald Trump got 74 million votes. 74 million votes on his own was the highest any American president has polled in the history of America. But these people who wanted Donald Trump out, they went and mobilized 81 million voters to come and say no to the 74 million. That is how they kicked out Donald Trump. Applying that to Nigeria, you have all sorts of groups and blocks that are totally angry with the current system. You have ASU, they are ignored. Students, they are at home. You have the women, see the way APC and PDP treated women, they are there. You have uh, the labor unions, see how they are treating them. You know, you have all those groups. If the labor party is strategic and methodical, by going to harness all these people who have one grievance or the other against the system today, and they put them in a movement, they are, I can't see how they are not going to sweep the elections at all levels in Nigeria. But that work needs to be done. So far, I can't see the Labour Party doing that work. But they have to begin to do that work now. Because if they think six months is too long a time, it may not be long enough for them. So, but let's begin to look at the combination of uh, the SDP and uh, the Labour Party in Benway State. We're talking about the alliance now that's been formed, despite the fact that we know that the centre is not together. Uh, that's why you have uh, all of these factions and different interests. But it is what it is in Benway State. What should we expect from this alliance? So, first and foremost, the Labour Party gubernatorial candidate for Benue is, is on, in his own person, a strong candidate. Why? Because he has been in the House of Representatives for four times. He, he has consistently won elections to go back to the House of Representatives. In fact, when he lost out in the PDP, in terms of the primaries, he went to Abga. And he still won election under Abga. The current term he is now in the House of Rep was under Abga. It was while he was in the House of Rep that he decamped to the APC. 
and now to the Labour Party. So he is a young man. He's, I think he's under 40. He has a good following from the youth. He is also somebody that is known to have delivered constituency projects and all of that. So the Labour Party can build a very strong and effective campaign around him. And if indeed what the SDP are doing now is genuine, as in the SDP are now going into an alliance with them, that is also going to be a very, very good opportunity for the Labour Party to harness all these disenfranchised people, people who are angry in the system, bring them together, and they can take the election easily, as far as I'm concerned. But a lot of work needs to be done. All right, then. Um, but do you also expect, I mean, Nigerians have anticipated up until this point uh, some thought force movement, especially uh, when we understand, understood or understand what happened in 2015, where you had different parties coming together, uh, you know, to withstand or oppose and confront the ruling party at the time. So uh, should we expect uh, that particular action to the national level, more like uh, expect a rise to the national level of this formation, the SDP and the Labour Party? It would be a good thing if the SDP are the national and uh, the Labour Party come into an alliance. And you, you speak about a thought force. I personally believe that we have a thought force in Nigeria now, and that's the Labour Party. As we speak today, if the elections happen today, the Labour Party is going to sweep the elections amongst the educated people, those who are in cities, the working class, for those who have their PVCs, because uh, the, the presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, has a huge following. I think where the Labour Party is going to have issues, if the elections go today, will be at the grassroots. And that is where the Labour Party, which is an effective thought force now. They are a thought force because you can hear the PDP and the APC uh, having sleepless nights. They are, instead of uh, focusing on their own candidates and on their own campaigns, they are focusing on the Labour Party and its candidates. That's to tell you that they are feeling the heat. So it, it, the Labour Party is a clear thought force for the 2023 elections, but they need to do a lot of work at the grassroots. As, as we said earlier, they need to take this party to the grassroots. The, the ordinary woman and man in the village, the farmer, uh, the trader in the market and all of that, do they know what the Labour Party stands for? Do they know the logo of the Labour Party? Do they know the candidates of the Labour Party? If you say Mr. Peter Obi, do they know who he is? You know, what he has done before? And that is a lot of work that needs to be done. So if the Labour Party is very strategic, methodical and tactical in their approach, using the same approach that those who did not want Donald Trump in office used to, to take him out of office, they are going to win the Nigeria's election, or in the minimum, cause a, a, a runoff. But that is a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. But, but how do you now say that the Labour Party is a thought force, especially when you also have mentioned that, I mean, looking at it, the Labour Party does not even have a structure. Uh, so we talked about Benway State. I mean, what's the strength of the Labour Party in Benway State? And you look at all the states, 36 states, including the FCT. Uh, what's the tendency that they have what it takes, you know, to win an election? This is not to uh, make nonsense of the party, but to look at the facts on the table. So how, is, how are they the thought force? And we understand that the force is a combination of other forces, coming together to withstand a particular force. All right, so, uh, like I said, if the elections happen today, the Labour Party does not have those structures nationwide. But this is what the Labour Party needs to do. And mercy, there are going to be very interesting developments as we head towards 2023. What you see today is not what going to be the situation next month. It will not be the same situation by September, October, December. We are going to see more of these alliances, more of the campaigns and journey of forces and all of that. And to me, the Labour Party is there to win the support of those who are angry with the system. For instance, the APC just announced a Muslim Muslim ticket. For a lot of people, they are very angry about that. 
Ordinarily, they shouldn't be angry. Because Nigeria has done Muslim Muslim ticket in the past. But they are angry because the past seven years of Buhari's government, Nigeria has never been polarized along ethnic and religious divides. So the whole issue of ethnicity and religion has been brought to the national fore. To if people are sensitive to it. So for a party like the APC to now go and form a Muslim Muslim ticket, a lot of people, including APC members, are going to be angry with that. And that is where the Labour Party needs to go to, to win all those people over. You see, I, I'm talking about the Donald Trump uh, strategy, uh, sorry, the, the strategy adopted by those who wanted Donald Trump out. They were not all dem Democratic Party members. Some of them were even Republicans. Who didn't want Donald Trump in office? So regardless of their party, they came together and sought Donald Trump out. And that is what the Labour Party should do in, ter in terms of strategy. You know, just harness all those who are angry with the system. Who are angry with the system. I cannot see any Nigerian now who is not angry with the system. In fact, uh, pictures were shown uh, yesterday or two days ago of uh, some of the hostages that were taking off the Kaduna train, Kaduna bound train. You look at emaciated Nigerians. You look at dehumanized Nigerians, abused, traumatized Nigerians. These people have been seized in their own country, in Nigeria, and they are being kept in Nigeria, in Nigeria soil. And we have a chief of defense staff that goes to work. His commander in chief is traveling up and down. What is going for them? If you say you are a chief of defense staff or you are a commander in chief, what are you defending? If you cannot go to the rescue of Nigerians who are held hostage in their own country, they are not, they've not been taken outside the borders of Nigeria. They are inside Nigeria. And every day, the commander in chief, the chief of defense staff, the service chiefs, inspector general of police, they are going to bed, sleeping, waking up, eating their food, going back to bed. Not bothering that you have Nigerians like animals in this rain, in some forests in Nigeria. So people are angry with the system. And that is the opportunity for Labour Party to form, to gather all these people and then just throw out these people, this uh, APC or PDP, out of government. That's the same thing that uh, those who wanted Donald Trump out did. The opportunities so, are so, so, but, uh, but just a quick one, Nika Gule, before we just move away now. You have talked about the fact that people are angry, uh, people are dissatisfied. And usually it's a dissatisfaction that bets uh, the, a thought force. And so we're saying that Nigerians are dissatisfied. Uh, we have seen, you know, possible alliance, but that didn't happen with the SDP, I mean, I beg your pardon, the Labour Party and the NNPP were, were waiting. Uh, but you, you have also mentioned that uh, we still have a time, so anything can happen between now uh, and 2023 elections. As we uh, proceed in the course of the day, there might just be changes and different actions. But one thing that is very, uh, very, very real is the fact that if Nigerians are angry and people are dissatisfied and people are tired of the status quo and they want change, what happened in the closest election to 2023? We have two of them. The next would be the Oshun State election. Fingers across. We want to see if people are really dissatisfied. If they're dissatisfied, then we begin to see it not just waiting for 2023, but even at the state level. So yes, we saw the Akiti State elections and nothing happened. We, we probably would have assumed that it would have been an alliance of any sort just to take out, you know, the, the party, uh, the ruling party at the time. But that wasn't even the case. The ruling party came back on board. So where, what are we talking about now? Yeah, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There are at different levels. Like you have already said, in Ekiti, the status quo was maintained. The ruling party got back. Why? Because... The, the third force that is being built around the Labour Party hadn't got his game together yet for the KT uh, gubernatorial election. They could probably not get their game right for the Oshun uh, gubernatorial election, which is this weekend, by the way. So this, these two elections, the KT and Oshun, are not a very good yardstick to measure the third force movement that is forming now. Uh, we should be able to assess this movement around the, the third quarter, fourth quarter of this year, and that is when you would have seen that a lot of uh, realignments and alliances and jostlings and all of that are going to. But, you know, uh, like, uh, like uh, uh, Riley said, or earlier said, um, uh, the Labour Party is indeed 
a broadening threat force and it can actually make a major impact in the political landscape, but they have to be very strategic about it. By now, Peter Obi and the Labour Party should have a very strong strategy team. This game will be won with strategy. Mm. Well, I'm sure that it's a conversation that would never end until we get to 2023. Uh, thank you so much, Nika Gule, for being part of the show. We appreciate your time. Thank you so very much, Messi. I have a beautiful day. I hope it's not raining too much in Lagos. But then I want to always leave the message with Nigerians. We are all seeing the shenanigans that are happening in the political landscape. Where to show our anger is at the ballot box. So if you don't have your voter's card now, please go and register. INEC has reopened the online platform. You can do your pre-registration online, transfer your voter card online. Let's go get our PVCs and we'll speak next year. All right then. Uh, well, that's the size of a conversation and uh, looking at the alliance between the Labour Party and the SDP in Benway State, does that mean that it would trickle down to a national movement? Fingers still will continue to be crossed. Stay with us when we return. We'll be looking at our second conversation right here.